Hi and welcome back. So in this video I'm going to do another uh, Calc 1 final review problem. We are going to take a look at the limit as x approaches infinity of 5, that should be a 5, sorry, of 5 minus 3x squared divided by 5x squared plus 3x minus 8. So if you want to pause the video, this is going to be the problem that we're going to work on. And so now if you've unpaused the video, I'm going to start working through this. So the important thing to realize is we're taking just a, you know, take a second and realize that we're taking the limit as x goes to infinity. So if we had, you know, a graph, if we had, you know, a graph like this, and our function, you know, it does, does, I don't know, does whatever the function, whatever this function might look like. We're figuring out the limit as we go really, really far in this direction, right? We're figuring out the limit as x goes to infinity. So what, so just take, you know, it's good to get the intuition that this means that x is going to be really, really big. So we're just sort of going to be worried about how fast is our function going to grow as x gets really, really big. And are there any things that are, you know, as x gets really, really big, are there any things that are going to kind of not matter anymore? And uh, essentially, uh, what we talked about talked about a little bit in uh, the previous videos, and I'm kind of rushing through this because this is just final review, is that we only are going to care about these highest order terms, about this these x squared terms, because these are the highest, these are the highest terms of what we're looking at. So, it, you know, and you can think about it this way, you know, if we are, say x is, say x is, I don't know, uh, let's say x is a thousand. Well then, x squared, then 3x squared, then we could say that 3x squared is going to be 3 times 10 to the third times 10 to the third, so it's 3 times, 3 times a million. So it's going to be 3 million. How about what is just plain 3x? Well, 3x, that's just going to be, I'll write this over here, 3x, if x is 1,000, that's just going to be 3,000. How about, let's do another, and, and then also realize, what is, what is 5 going to be? Well, 5 is just going to be 5. There's, that's, you know, 5 is just a constant. 5 isn't going to move at all. So how about, let's take a, an example where x is even bigger. Let's say x is 1 million. 1 million. Let's say we put 1 million in for x. Well then 3x squared, that's going to be 3, 3 times a million squared. And a million is 10 to the 6th, so, so uh, a million squared is going to be 10 to the 12th. So it's going to be 3 times 10 to the 12th. This is, a, you know, an enormous number. How about what would just plain 3x be if, if x is a million? Well, then it would just be 3 million. 3 million. And once again, 5. 5 doesn't change. 5 is still just going to stay 5. And so hopefully, and maybe it might even make more sense for me to write out all the zeros, but realize that this would be this number right here, this 3 times 10 to the 12th, that's a 3 with 12 zeros after it. So it's a really enormous number. And it's a much bigger number even than... 3 million. I know 3 million probably sounds like a super huge number, but the point is that as x gets really big, as x goes to infinity, that these other terms, this, this constant, you can hopefully really see that the constant isn't going to matter at all, really, once, you know, once x gets really big, that these constants don't matter. But in addition to that, these lower order terms of x, this plus 3x, really isn't going to influence uh, the change of the function that much. So all that is going to matter about this function as x grows to infinity 
are these higher order x terms, the highest order of x. So minus 3 times x squared over 5x squared. So therefore, we can actually rewrite this. We can rewrite this limit as the limit as x approaches infinity, and because all these other terms really don't matter, we can write this as minus 3x squared divided by 5x squared as x goes to infinity. And probably uh, you can see that you know we could just take the limit here, but uh, the what what we're going to do here instead of taking our limit is we're just going to cancel out x squared with x squared. So x squared cancels with x squared, and we're just left with the limit as x approaches infinity of minus three over five, which hopefully you could see you can see is a constant. And what's the limit as x approaches anything of a constant? Well, it's just going to be that constant, right? Minus 3 over 5. So this would be our final answer. And even, you know what, I'm going to, uh, if you don't, if you're trying to go through these uh, final review problems quickly, which I would definitely recommend that you, you should do, you should try to get through these somewhat quickly. You don't have to, you don't have to keep watching now, but if you want, I'll actually pull up my, grapher real quick and I'm going to put this expression in. So we have 5 minus 3 x squared and then all of that actually I'm going to have to put brackets around that y equals 5 minus 3 x squared that divided by 5 x squared plus 3x, oh, didn't mean to do that, minus 8. Okay, so there we go. There's, and I'm actually going to, you can see that my computer is, I think, slowing down right now, so I might, uh, uh, the video might be skipping a little bit, but all I want to do is show you that as I zoom out, so I'm going to zoom out really far, and then I'm just going to get my zoom zoom tool. And I'm just going to zoom in really close to the x-axis and zoom in again. I think that I'm still maybe zoom in a couple more times. Definitely a couple of more times. Okay, there we go. So now we've got 1 times 10 to the 6. So that's, uh, you know, we've essentially got x equal to 1 million. And let me get my select tool. And so now we can see that y is going to be equal to minus, minus 0.6 is going to be minus, is going to be negative 3 fifths, right? And 1 uh, minus 1 fifth is 0.2. Multiply that by point by a uh, multiply that by 3 is going to be 0.6. So hopefully you can see that this actually did work out. We did get the right answer. And, you know, normally, as with most things in a, in a calculus class, you'll probably see that by graphing, uh, by graphing these, uh, these uh, problems, you can, you know, you really don't even have to look in the back of the book. You can really just use some type of graphing utility uh, and, and check to make sure that you did the, did the problem right. So anyway, uh, I guess that's it for this video. Uh, if you want to keep watching, I'll just keep doing review problems. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.